Hey, everybody, I want to give you something that I promise you, if you listen to it, if you let it, this will bless you. This is not something of my own understanding, but this is a fact. Every one of us have had times where we've suffered, we've gone through things. And what do we do when we go through things? When we're having problems, when we're struggling, when we're in need, desperately, what do we do? We cry out to God. As a matter of fact, isn't that usually, let's be honest, when we tend to have our greatest encounters, our greatest desires with the Lord, when we really need, and the reason why we really need is because we've gone through something, we are struggling, we are at a at a low point, a low place in our lives, and so we seem to get really close to God. And then we wonder sometimes, why does God even allow these things to happen? Why do I, who love the Lord, have to go through those things? Well, let me help you out here. This is what I've learned. This is what I know to be a fact, and we see it all throughout scriptures, and we also see it all throughout our own lives. God desires a close relationship with his creation, with his people. The problem is, though, we don't always seek him. We don't always want that same closeness. We'll say it, but we don't act like it. So what ends up happening is when things go bad, that's when we get on our knees. Think about some of you all who were alive during 9-11. When 9-11 happened and the, the country was kind of in an upheaval, we didn't know what was going on, or when other things have happened, either as a country or in our own lives, what do we do? We pray. We go to church, we read our Bibles, we search for answers, we search to get closer to him. Well, if God only hears from you or hears from you in the greatest sincerity when things are bad, when troubles and trials come your way, well then, what do you think God is not going to take away? The very thing that brings you closer to him. Yeah, Corey, I would love to have a great relationship with him, but without it being caused by or pushed by bad things. Now, understand God takes those things. He says he causes all things or, or the word is we know that God causes all things to work together for the good. I want you to notice what this thing is. When he says that God is causing, it doesn't say cause. It really says he works. This word right here is soon air gay, which is with an air gay works. So God is working with those things that happen in our lives. And he uses those to grow us, to make us closer for those that are called according to his purpose. So he will take those things, but that doesn't limit God, meaning that he can only use those things. You know what God would rather you do? And this is where I want you to just get a hold of this. God wants to hear from you. And if you could just praise him when the good things happen, I mean, even the small things, maybe you made it to work safely, praise him for that. Maybe your child is safe. You got a little bit of a raise. It wasn't enough of a raise that you wanted, but hey, you got a raise. Or you paid for groceries, you didn't like the bill, but you had the money to pay for it. Go ahead and praise God. Let God hear you rejoicing. Let him know that, or how about this? Let yourself know that you have the ability to talk to God, to praise God, to, to seek God when things are good. And not only, not just, not just when things are bad, because if that's the only time that God gets to hear from you, well then, and he wants to hear from you, well, then you're going to have a lot of bad things happen to you. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. But if you can learn to rejoice and to praise his name when even the smallest of things happen. Let me ask you guys a question. If someone called you or spoke to you when good things happened to them, something that you did for them and you they called you and spoke to you and, and got closer to you, you enjoyed that. What would it likely increase you or cause you to do? Bless them some more. It might cause you to want to do more things to have this fellowship. Does that mean that God is going to do the exact same thing and going to just keep blessing you over and over and over and over again just because you are praising him? No. But what won't happen is he's not going to take away those things because you have learned to, as Paul says, you have learned to be content no matter what state you're in, whether you are up or whether you're down, whether you've been blessed or whether you've been brought low. In every way, learn, as Paul says in Philippians 4, learn to be content, happy, and then your, watch your relationship with Christ grow. Are there going to be some negative things happen? Yeah, but guess what? You communicating with God or you praying because something bad has happened won't be the reason why you do so. You'll do so because you have this closeness and this desire to be with him. And watch what, and what ends up happening more than that is there's going to be a peace over you no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, you will have trained yourself to be content because you've trained yourself to praise God, even with the things that you may 
customarily not have praised him for. So do that one thing, praise him for everything, small, little, even if it's in someone else's life. Give God the opportunity to hear you, not when things are bad, but when things are going well as well, when things are uneventful and when things are eventful and see how and see how much of a spiritual benefit you get from that. Amen.